So hello everyone and welcome to our Q&A session about fasting and Corona with Dr. Françoise Wilhelmi de Toledo, the scientific director of the Buchinger Wilhelmi Clinics. Hello again, Françoise, and thank you once again for taking the time. Hello, Lisa. It's a pleasure. So we continue today with questions about the right food during this pandemic. And the first question is, what are your additional tips to eat healthy right now? One advice I would give anyone, don't buy sweet soda drinks because this is the alcohol of the children. Mm -hmm. uh, this is addictive. This is making you sick. This is giving you a bad um, capacity of processing sugar, which is the first step to diabetes. And we say that uh, diabetics are, bad, uh, are at more risk to get yeah. corona. So don't take uh, sweet drinks. If your children uh, claim for them, then do some lemon juice with water, with uh, some honey or some syrup or, or some, uh, some sugar, but you can dosage it much, much less. And children have to get accustomed to drink water. Water is the basics and enjoy yeah. water. So um, you have a very big opportunity to shop properly today and the fresh things can be prepared when you have bought them and stored in the fridge and already prepared, at least peeled and cut so that it doesn't take too much room. What is also helping me a lot, if I'm not sure what to eat, if I'm longing for something unhealthy, is drinking a cup of tea. Somehow I have the feeling that gives me time to reflect, is that really food I want now? Am I, am I only bored or what is that feeling causing inside of me? And then having a cup of tea somehow gives me the time. And sometimes I even forget then that initially I wanted to have some sweets. Uh, you are a very advanced person. But <laughs> at least uh, uh, taking a sort of, um, of uh, ersatz, like we say in German. Replacement. Um, substitute. Yeah. Uh, if you f crave for carbohydrates, for sugar, then of course a tea is not very uh, calming. But you can have, a, for instance, a spice tea you do yourself with ginger, with cardamom, yeah. with uh, cinnamon, and then you put some cream in it and you put some, uh, some honey. And then you have a beverage which is nicely sweet, but contains good foods and at the same time doesn't have all that, that bad fat or the bad fats you find in the pastry you can buy, you know, in the industrial chemistry you have, in the industrial um, products, you have a lot of very bad fats and very bad sugars. So if you crave for bread and butter, but you're not hungry and you notice, okay, if I start eating bread and butter, I will eat the whole uh, bread and, and a half a kilo of uh, cheese. Uh, then um, you have to, to look for something which is more salty. This can be, for instance, a handful of uh, nuts that you have roasted and you have put a little salt on them. So try when you notice the craving, of course, to look behind. What do I really crave? Because I'm full, I'm satiated. Uh, maybe I'm even overweight, so it's not mm -hmm. food I need. It's not a nutritional need. But what is it and in which direction goes the craving so that you substitute for things that a little bit resemble what you crave for? The next question is also about fat, but hopefully not about the bad fat, but about good fats. It's about the ketogenic diet. And the question is if the ketogenic diet is a good way of eating right now. Well, there are several grades of ketogenicity. For children who are epileptic and cannot um, accept the drugs, um, they have an extremely severe ketogenic diet. This is not a diet I recommend to anyone except to these neurological problems. They have to be supplemented with vitamins. And so this is not an extreme ketogenic diet. It's certainly not what I would recommend today, but a ketogenic direction. And already when you do the time-restricted eating, then you, you have some moments of ketogenicity. So when you, when you are hungry, you are in ketosis. So this metabolic switch is excellent. And uh, giving to your healthy diet, based on the things I told you before, 
a ketogenic touch, meaning that you don't exaggerate with fruits, even if they are healthy, but don't put uh, light liters of uh, orange juice, for instance, even if you do it yourself because it has a lot of sugar and uh, don't eat pasta every day, tons of them. Of course, I don't talk about industrial sweets because this are not <laughs> to be anyway. recommended at all. So uh, reduce even that and go more if you want a juice, take a vegetable juice, a carrot juice. Um, limit a little bit the uh, sources of carbohydrates, going more into the ketogenic uh, thing and then uh, do the time restricted thing, uh, eating where you switch into ketosis. This seems to be excellent. And if we always need to have studies to document it, I cannot just say that. I can just say that uh, the Charité uh, this morning just published even that ketosis was good for virus, viral infections. This is anecdotal, in my opinion, just to have one study, but it's always nice to mention it. There are countless studies who show the therapeutical effects of ketosis. But the thing is that you don't have to exaggerate it if you're not fasting. When you fast, you're permanently in ketosis. And this is a new physiological situation because fasting is another physiological situation. You have the eating mode where you're not in ketosis except if you let the long pause and the fasting mode. The long-term fasting, this means five days, 10 days, 15 or more, then you're permanently in ketosis. This has enormous uh, therapeutical effects, like diminishing inflammation, like resetting your own metabolism. Uh, um, it's good for diabetes, it's good for chronic inflammatory diseases, etc. This is the topic of another video. I'm looking forward already. Uh, next question also about different ways of eating and uh, that person is from Spain, I think, would like to know what you think about juice fasting right now or eating raw food at the moment. Well, I start by the raw food. Raw food is, of course, the best thing to eat most, most of the items because you preserve the whole value of a vegetable, of a fruit, for instance. Some things you cannot eat them raw because you cannot digest. And this is the point. By raw food, you need to be able to digest them. If not, they are going to give you gas and bloating. And what is a gas? This is a substance produced by some bacteria who thrive, that thrive when you have unproperly digested pieces of food coming into the, the guts, especially. So they thrive and they produce gas and it's not the right bacteria to. So raw food is excellent as long as you feel well and you notice you can digest them properly. And even if they are mega healthy, if you don't digest them, they're not healthy for you. So take the quantity of raw food you can stand. There is a training possibility. The younger you are, you are the better you stand it. Um, and uh, you can start with small quantities and enhance it until the point where you we can stand them well. If they are juiced, then it's easier to, to digest them because you don't have all the fi fibers. But it's a very, very concentrated product. For one orange juice, you need one kilo of oranges. And... Um, the risk is that this concentrated food, you can exaggerate it. And then you have these peaks of insulin when the, the sugar is coming up in the, in the blood and you have the peaks of insulin. Of course, you can take vegetable juices, then you don't have this problem. They are very concentrated in minerals, uh, fruit juices and vitamins. Uh, so they have properties, but at the same time, it's not a natural way of eating. Most of the people need to choose something. So one day of uh, vegetable juice and with one fruit juice is an excellent cleansing. It's like doing a day of fasting. It's, a, it's an intermittent fasting form if you want. But um, and longer, it has to have a structure. And I always recommend to do longer things, longer uh, nutritional changes with a guidance, an appropriate guidance.
Thank you very much. You were speaking earlier about intermittent fasting, and I know that your preferred way is the 16-8. Uh, we talked about this in another video. I will link it also here. And the question is about how often should one do the 16-8 per week? Um, there is a very a great scientist called Mark, Mark Matson, and in his last article uh, in the New Eng England Journal of Medicine, he gives a sort of uh, guidance. How can I step by step start? First, if you never did that, then do one day maybe, and you, you're not obliged to do 16, 16, 8, so meaning 16 hours without eating. You can do maybe 14 hours. Make, make yourself uh, check and test. It all depends on your age and your digestive capacity, maybe the large, uh, the quantity of, of food you ate uh, on the last meal. Um, so do, for instance, a long pause that can be between 10 and 14 hours. And if you notice, okay, I'm not hungry before 14, not even at 14 hours, I'm still not really hungry, then go a little further make an experiment with yourself, knowing that hunger is your wonderful orient orientation. Be nicely healthy, hungry, and then eat at that moment. But of course, if you wait too much, you, you can also suddenly overeat because you waited so much that you just uh, jump on the food and have no limits. Of course, this is very bad. So get smoothly, make just the pause always longer, and follow your body feeling of hunger. And when the hunger is right, then you eat, and then you observe society. And when you're satiated, you have to stop. Because uh, all the things you eat then, in addition, they nourish only your doctors. <laughs> Thank you very much. The last question for today. I feel passive and dependent. What can I do to gain control again? Well, gain control is um, maybe not the way I would suggest directly because gain control is something cognitive. Um, this passiveness, this feeling of uh, something should happen or um, of being anxious of what is going to come and imagining the worst scenarios, of course, uh, generates a lot of anxiety and this anxiety supports itself. So after a while, you don't know how to stop the machine and stop it with a, uh, with a sort of willpower. It's not easy in that situation. So maybe there is another way to seeing the things. First is to observe. When you feel anxious, when you feel unsatisfied, because you say passive, unsatisfied with yourself, then just observe what is that feeling making with myself. And then you realize, like Eckhart Tolle, a big spiritual master, um, there are two of us, of us. There is me, that may be very serene, very deep serene, and the one who is anxious. And so you try to disinfect. What, what is this anxiety? Where do I feel it in my body? Sometimes in the stomach, sometimes it's in the whole body, sometimes you feel cold, sometimes you feel just nervous and you, you cannot stay in place. So observe that, like if it was something happening to you, which is like in a film, and you describe it for yourself until you really try to breathe one or two times you really try to feel, for instance, your hands. How is the temperature of my hands? How is my body feeling now? And this takes you away from the obsession, uh, which is mental activity. It calms your brain because your brain stops working because you are feeling. When you feel, you don't think. And when you don't think, you don't feel anxious. So you are in the now. And this is the big, big um, truth that you can experience wonderfully today. Some people, they uh, do an activity like, for instance, they write a diary. You could take a sheet of paper and just write, describe how you feel with words. And this puts you in the feeling. 
and you stop thinking and in that moment it disappears. If you put, uh, put a piece of music and you are able to listen only to this music, then you will have the same effect. You stop thinking, then you stop being anxious. If you um, do music yourself, if you start painting, if you play with your, with your children, if you have any activity where you can be totally inside of it, then you will notice maybe for some seconds, suddenly the, the, the excruciating feeling of, of fear, of being menaced, being in danger, is going to vanish for one or two seconds, then you know, okay, thinking is producing the comments you make on the situation. Maybe, you know, and some people say it, myself also, ashamed sometimes I say, this time is, brings me so many happiness moments uh, of calm, of, of I never looked at the sky the same way because I was always busy and quick. And now, you know, you are all the time. Of course, I'm privileged because I live in the countryside and, and the, the nature is beautiful in the spring. But even in the city, you can enjoy that. So it's not an easy answer I gave you, but uh, um, it's really worth training. You will have it for your whole life. And life is not COVID time, Corona time. Life is before and after, and especially life is now in the moment where you where you are. Absolutely. We were also speaking the other day about the beautiful aspects of getting active. And I think that is also something, if you feel passive, then getting active can really put you in a state of getting control of the very situation as well. Maybe if a person is not that much uh, feeling of going inwards, then maybe it's the right moment of really getting active and moving, doing some exercise that is also working even at home in, in small spaces. We have prepared some videos that I can also link in here, but um, I think getting active is also something that can help in the situation, right? You are totally right. Um being totally in the movement and if you are lucky enough to have a place where you can go outside and you can make a little uh, walk like in our region we can we are road so you enjoy nature you enjoy so much all the feelings nature is giving you the distance uh, sceneries the next sceneries the smells the noises and the noises of nature are wonderful today so yeah. All that goes to with exercise and um, research has shown that many of the effects of fasting are found also when you exercise according to your capacities, not over your capacities, but according to them, you will certainly have the same than when you, you do an activity uh, like creating something or uh, artistic activity, uh, handicraft exercise especially if you are centered if you are really not thinking about thousand other other things but you really doing like you are a big yoga uh, yeah. specialist and uh, when you do a posture of yoga you are totally in the posture absolutely and this yeah. is uh, the, the extreme power of this type of uh, uh, traditional activities programs which are just a gift for humanity, especially in the times of confinement. Thank you so much. Those were the questions for today. I thank you so much for taking the time answering all of those. And uh, if we receive additional questions, I think we will produce just another Q&A session the next week or the week after. Huh? With pleasure, with pleasure. Bye bye, everybody. And um, make the best out of it. Thank you so much and see everyone soon again. Bye-bye.